with us today. We have Ari Yu. She is uh, part of the U.S. Blockchain Coalition, and she's agreed to be a, a guest on our, our show here. We just followed Vivek, so that's going to be a tough one to follow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ari is currently a uh, managing director at uh, Yellow Umbrella Ventures, where she plays a significant role as an investor. She's a prominent figure in technology and the blockchain industry. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you for having me, Frank and Mark. Yes, absolutely. So, um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your uh, role at the U.S. Blockchain Coalition? You've got you're here to talk a lot about uh, what you're doing there. You got some announcements coming out today, so we're just gonna get see level set for us what you do there, and then we'll talk a little bit about maybe some of the stuff we're got rolling out. Yeah, so actually uh, myself and Lee Brecher, who's the Texas Blockchain Council right. president, we co-chair this and we founded this back in 2021. So okay. started with a call in, in May. I live in Washington State, okay. a very, very blue state. And so I called up Lee and I said, hey, you guys are like making so much traction here. The uh, attention of the governor is oh, like a really big guy. thing here in Texas. Are, is this a partisan thing? Like this technology should not be partisan. Are, is this going partisan? That would not be cool. And he's like, no, 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 no. This should be nonpartisan. We're here on the education, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, then, wait a minute. What? You're Texas. I'm Washington. Are other states talking to each other? No, the states are not talking to each other. Oh, wow. This is in 2021. And so over about a month, we had about 30 states on a call. And then we've been meeting every month. So we're about 46 states across the U.S. strong. We meet monthly. We share resources. We collaborate. You can think of the U.S. Blockchain Coalition. I'm the executive director as a uh, sort of like a think tank. You should sure. do analysis and you know help with talking points and model legislation and summits and you know public private dinners, things of that sort. Getting the states together to collaborate and share as much as possible. It was great. And we're actually the only one in the US that does this as an organization. Focus on states. Focus on states. You know what I find amazing is that like I've said for you know, I've tried to explain to the audience, to me and to others that from a financial advisor's point of view, I'm a certified financial planner, financial advisor for many years. And I can tell people about like, you know, other things that they should and could lighten up on and diversify and I can't on this. And so obviously these are things that are really near and dear to my heart. I was talking to a high level executive at a, a big insurance company who's a client of mine and he let me know that on the state level, there's like 17 states that are working on legislation in order to get a cryptocurrency backed by gold passed. And when you have, when you hear that people at enormous financial services companies are actually paying attention to that kind of stuff, it starts to get a little fascinating. We've been in that, I like to think kind of almost like a crypto winner for so long, maybe there's a little thaw, but we'll see. But legislatively, nothing has stopped. So how, how have you uh, worked with the, the, the new states that have come in? I mean, it's so quickly, it seems like it's coalesced so fast. How, how are you? How are you seeing that evolution? Well, I think there's two things to think about when you look at the states. A lot of people are like, oh, how, how does Washington work with a state like Kentucky or Arkansas? Like, you guys are so different. Yeah. Well, actually, no. We're all humans first. And why do we care about this in the first place, right? Well, these are not tech entrepreneurs that are leading the charge in their particular states. They're right. leading the charges in particular states because they care about their communities. They want opportunities for their communities, jobs, investors. I mean, that's what our economy thrives on. And so that is what binds us all together. All politics matter, is red, local, right? Yes, right. Red states, blue states, purple states, it doesn't matter. We're all here to like bring this innovation, have it stay in the United States and better our different communities. Yeah. And then the second point on that is the states are the best laboratories for democracy. Mm -hmm. So we've seen it, like doing the same thing over and over again, expecting change is what? Crazy, yeah. right? <laughs> right. And so if we're gonna continue to spend millions and millions of dollars in DC only expecting regulatory clarity and change, State the right. best laboratory for, for democracy. We can move right. more quickly. We can come up with a policy idea, implement it in five, six states, watch it, get the data and the best practices, and then if it really does make sense, maybe like you pass it in more states or we bring it to DC. Like there's a much better process for all of this. So Harry, what you're telling me is that the states should govern themselves first and then on the federal level they should listen to the majority of their states? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> shocking, right? Shocking. Like, the people can lead, and policy is typically reactionary, right? It's reactive yeah. looking backwards. We still need to push forward and innovate. Yep. I mean, I'm an entrepreneur, right? We still need to push forward and innovate. Regulatory clarity or not, all right, well, you can kind of read between the lines. We want to keep consumer space safe, right? 
We right. want to, you know, allow innovation to grow. We want to keep up the bad guys. All right, do it. Go, go build it. Yeah, from an operational level with a like a company, like do you go live immediately, tell everyone your story before you have a deep enough, wide enough moat? Usually not, right? Yeah, right, exactly. They want, you want the cutting edge, you want the states, you want the people to do something and then figure out where the pitfalls are, right? You right. want a deeper, wider moat and that's the sharpest. Absolutely. And especially in the Web3 space or in FinTech, right? Like people are like, oh, I'm going to move to Wyoming or I'm going to move to Singapore or Gibraltar, right? No, like this is global first, yes. Right. But if you're going to play it, play your cards right and actually build a company that's going to be here for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years, mm -hmm. you're going to start in the most hostile environments and make sure you set up your procedures and compliance and all of your regulatory stuff inside your company mm -hmm. in the right way. And then that is your natural moat that you'll have as an entrepreneur. Right. So uh, I know from uh, my, my work in the, the mining industry that you guys have some unique trapped energy situations up there in uh, the Northwest. Uh, so that has led to some mining operations coming in there. So is that is that primarily what the driver of, of uh, in your state of what blockchain is? Or is it also like so on the software side, enterprise side? What's what's going on in that part of the country? So in July of this year, we released a state-by-state -state report. Uh, there's a state battle card for every single state in the United States mm -hmm. that documents the economic impact of Web3 for right. every state. And so in Washington state, we're very strong in enterprise. The enterprise story in terms of use cases leads. Okay. And so um, Washington cares about the enterprise use cases, government use cases, uh, supply chain, manufacturing right we also care about verifiable credentials and and you know the that's sort of the the side of the events we are in terms of it's, it's not so much like bitcoin mining and energy which is a very hot topic here in the southeastern states like sure. obviously texas or yeah. Oklahoma, et cetera but in pacific northwest and it's particularly on the west coast that's more around use cases and sure. verifiable credentials and people identity and I've, so I, I got one more kind of regional question. Yeah. I, I know you want to talk about the, the, the later announcements today, too. I want to get that out. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I follow the, I mean, down here in Texas, we said it was like if it at all a Republican thing. Texas is like very Republican. So it, it has to be a Republican thing here, but that's not necessarily right. the case nationwide. Right. In the you know, in U.S. Congress, it seems that on the right side of the aisle, they're more crypto friendly, more blockchain friendly. Uh, kind of Elizabeth Warren kind of leading the charge on the opposition. That's got to be frustrating from someone from your part of the country. It's frustrating for me because I'm not necessarily a conservative. I, I on a lot of things, I fall on the left side of the spectrum. And I think uh, a lot of the left is leaving behind blockchain and crypto as a tool for even like really far left ideas like anti-capitalism. Right. There's, it's a tool for that. Like it can be. It's a very neutral tooling set that could be used for any political stripe. What do you, like, being in that part of the country, like, what is the thinking that you're running into uh, on the left when, it's, when it comes down to political ideology? So it really depends on who you're talking to. Like, sure. when it comes to the people, the builders, and the community, yeah. like, we totally get it. Like, the ethos is still part of our heart, whether you're, you know, diehard blue or something else, right? right? And t t typically it's more diehard blue, especially in Seattle. Yeah. Um, yeah, but policymakers, I think, you know, they may be open to it. You know, there is a lot of like tech forward thinking policymakers in Washington, obviously, because of, you know, the Microsofts and the Amazons, but they're not really willing to kind of like put their, be on the front lines of having that conversation with the rest of the party, which is unfortunate. Um, and the way we're going about it is really just talking about uh, digital identity and healthcare and, you know, using the Struby Leisure Technologies to take care of healthcare registration data and, yeah. um, you know, titling and keeping it very benign like that. Um, I mean, we really believe, like, digital identity, once that's really figured out, that'll unlock a lot of the use cases that people talk about constantly in the space. It really is, you know, the crux is, like, really figuring out the digital identity and the password and logins or, like, scenarios. Like, that hasn't been figured out. So yeah. we're taking very enterprise nerd speak over there. Okay. Yeah. I think it's great that, uh, you know, if you think about it in that lens, the technology has kind of been overlooked and, and all the regulations on the money part. And it makes sense because obviously you hit someone in the wallet 
they don't like it, then maybe they vote wrong, right, or whatever. But from a foundational point of view, the technology is really what I'm excited about as well. If you look at, I was, I'm so surprised. I was listening to, gosh, I think it was Franklin Templeton that, that has an on-chain um, a mutual fund now, and they basically store their data from their trades, and it's like substantially cheaper. So I'm not sure how much you're familiar with that, but those types of things, it's like, wait, a single ledger is good for keeping track of trades, yeah. right? I mean, and it's probably cheaper, right? Yeah. And probably harder to break, right? right? So yes, here, DK, no more, right? And, and so I like the idea that like, in Seattle, you've been able to stay away from a lot of the, the as, as Bill Gurley says, the, the problems that they have 2,500 and change miles away. But the, from the banking side also, traditional finance, you see a lot of these banks now starting to offer crypto services. And what, do you have any thoughts on that? I think it's good that they're starting to think about it, but uh, until more banks have comfort around what is the regulatory feel around this, it's gonna be a little while before we really get there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna be a while before we get there. Uh, yeah, I, I'd like to see it sooner, but unfortunately, like that is the state of affairs. And you know, like uh, Vivek was just talking about, like there is the whole operation ch choke point, right? Like people that are operating companies and there's, it's hard to get banking services, email platform services, like it's just the basic things that an emperor needs. Sure. So it, it's, it's like, you know, you're operating a cannabis company, but right. it's not. Yeah. Um, but we have the same sort of issues as the cannabis companies do. And back to your other point around, like, you know, tr tracking the ledger and the, uh, the, the, how we need, like, provenance tracking, understanding, right. like, where this is happening and where it came from, especially mm -hmm. in this day of, like, deep fakes and artificial intelligence. Like, like that's the hot topic right now. Mm -hmm. There are so many of these emerging technologies that are database that really do need, like, an underpinning, like, Topper plumbing, and this technology can provide that. You know, we I need to be able to talk to you on Zoom and know that it's really you, and not right. like some like whoop, yeah, some fake yeah, yeah, you know, video on top of it. That was, and I need to know what you really look like. <laughs> You're not a 20 year old young chicken anymore, yeah. right? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> That's something I was going to talk to you about uh, with uh, regard to NFT technology, the evolution past digital art, right? That's really kind of what it was orig originally conceptualized for was was provenance. And then that's, uh, I think that, uh, I don't know if you agree, that's probably where it's going to be, you know, kind of see its next next act. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of things that need to happen before we get there. Maybe Absolutely. it'll happen in the next 5, 10, 20 years, but it's really, can people put down their walls and co-opitate co or co-opetition? Yeah. Cooperate with petition, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, what are, where do our circles intersect? Come up with some standards and guidance and policies and principles of how we interoperate yeah, you know, yeah. between states and between organizations, between countries. That's when we'll unlock the, uh, the NFT use cases, run digital identity and more of the enterprise use cases, uh, voting, right, digital, like all of these things really need us to come together and just agree on some principles and standards and we're not there yet. So uh, we're, we're getting close to the end of the segment here, so I want to let you have an opportunity to talk about the stuff that you can. I know that some of the stuff can't be talked about till this afternoon because you got a big announcement. Yeah. What can you talk about with regard to uh, U.S. blockchain and what's going on? Yeah, so the U.S. Blockchain Coalition, since our inception in, in June of 2021 officially, right. uh, we've grown quite a bit. We're about 46 states strong. Um, by the end of the year, we'll be all 50 states, so that'll be really huge. Um, We've been incubated in this company, this uh, organization called the WTI. It's actually the largest tech industry association in North America. Uh, but we're about to like, you know, get onto our next stage of the journey and maturity. And so that'll be announced at about 3 p.m. today. Wow. It'll unlock so many different opportunities. We'll be able to amplify um, what's going on at the States. We'll be able to help them with funding. We'll have resources. We'll be able to be just this network, not just for blockchain and Web3 technologies, but you know, for all emerging technologies on the policymaker front, coordinating communities, messaging, reacting to you know, good or bad legislation in DC. Um, it really just gives power to the people and makes it super uh, grassroots. And so we're really excited about this next future, next evolution of this uh, organization. That's right. Yeah, I, I think we have time for one more question. If you, if you don't have one, I've got one. Go ahead, go ahead. So, if we could, if we could align the power of of uh, the everybody in, in the industry behind one piece of legislation being considered right now, what's the most important thing to think about? I think right now, like the the hot topic is still around stable coins. Okay. 
And so that ultimately is the biggest use case that we have both nationally and internationally. And maybe it's that gateway drug, right? That kind of like opens people's eyes around what's really happening um, with this industry, right? Like you want to keep a lot of the stable coin business here in the United States. You don't want these stable coins to be going and incorporating and minting out in, you know, Timbuktu, sure, sure. like here, because we do care about the U.S. dollar being supreme, right, at sure. the end of the day. And so there are lots of different things that are playing into the story here that most people don't realize other than, you know, you know, it's not just black hoodie wearing super coders, you know, like. doing nefarious activities. I mean, that's a small 1% of all crypto. It's, it's much bigger than that. Right. Right. Larry, well, thank you so much for being on the show. Really appreciate it. And we cannot wait to hear what happens at 3 o'clock. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and that's 3 o'clock Central. Yes, yeah, officially 3.10. I'm telling everyone 3 o'clock because, you know. Was... <laughs> because you know how the real world works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. That's great. That's great. Thanks so much for being a guest on the show. You're very welcome. Hey, thanks for watching The Merge. We've got a ton more stuff for you to watch on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, everywhere. Check us out.